So you can trust Joe Biden. He says that the inflation numbers are fine. It went up just just an inch. And it's not anything to worry about. He's got it under control. They're completely not changing definitions or downplaying anything. It's all good. You know, the year over year inflation numbers, they don't matter because inflation just went up just an inch. So your gas utility service going up 33%. Regular gasoline up 25.8%, butter up 24.6%, flour up 23.3%, milk up 16.1%, electricity up 158 But I suppose most people probably don't use those things, so you know you don't have you don't have to worry about it. He also said, uh, guess what? The pandemic's over. Call it. That's a wrap. Despite the fact that mandates still exist. Still government agencies, government contractors, they're still getting fired. They still have to get their vaccine shot or they have to get the hell out. The military, they're still getting less than honorable discharges. All of the branches of service are still requiring it, ignoring religious exemptions. Of course, you don't have any rights to it. Religious exemptions in the military, that would be silly. Yeah, they said in letters and stuff like that they were going to ignore it. And I think everyone but the Marines, I think the Marines have kind of walked that back now. They're kind of letting that go. So the head of the, the military, the head of the executive branch, Joe Biden, has determined it's over. But you still have your mandates to follow and you still should listen to all your all, your, all the science that's out there. Now there's new variants and stuff like that. And obviously the stuff that's out there to protect you from that is not working against it. But hey... Six times more vaccinated people are in the ICU and five times more are hospitalized. Hmm. Don't ignore the science, people. And this is your person that uh, refuses to take a mental health fitness test. Trump was more than happy to do it. If you got nothing to hide, I'm sure it doesn't take that long. I'm sure as he's being examined normally, he could very easily take a test. If it's not a problem, take the test ease everyone's mind, and then they won't be able to say anything to you about it anymore. You can see the differences. Republican voters pick border security 50%, the economy 47%, immigration 46%, and crime 45% as their top issues. And you can see border security being 50 and immigration being 46 means the border is very important to Republicans. And then the economy and crime, obviously, it should be important to everybody. Uh, But Democrats' top issues, abortion... Healthcare, education, and protecting democracy. Because when they don't get what they want, they feel threatened. And they want to redefine everything, change the Constitution. So I'll turn you to this article on the Daily Wire, which is uh, Ben Shapiro. Uh, I really don't think they like... I don't think Ben Shapiro likes Trump at all. Trump is Trump's the man that can take down the highest number of swamp creatures. There's a high number of Schedule F employees that make policy in D.C., unelected bureaucrats, if you will, that drive policies. They essentially, they make laws. They were never elected. They control the day-to-day. As head of the executive branch, you were in control of intel, law enforcement, national security, regulatory bodies, foreign policy, the military, large industry guidance. It's really too big to handle. Even the 50,000 Schedule F employees alone, you know, imagine these people are making rules at the EPA and rules are not very different from laws. If they determine fines and all these other kinds of things, then, you know, imagine if they don't like fossil fuels. They hate big oil. These are the people that need to be removed from Washington. You could spend all your time, your entire presidency, trying to interview and find the right people and not succeed in filling all the job openings by the time you're done with your term, much less all the other things that you have to handle. And, and minor changes can be big politically. The Obama DOJ allow for fines to be paid by big corporations. That They were fined millions or even billions of dollars. They were allowed to pay their fines to a charitable organization. So essentially a company could be fined millions of dollars and then give the money instead of to the government to go towards helping reimburse victims, it would go towards the social justice warrior charity of their choice. They could embolden and enrich those people with their fines. And some of these are the the biggest reasons to elect Trump. He's a fighter and he knows the things I just mentioned. He knows how to 
remove the swamp, and he has plans to remove those Schedule F employees. And they're scared, and rightfully so. That's why you need Trump, because we all know big government's bloated and expensive, and it, the more and more they make all these little rules, the more they're just digging into your rights. They're, they're buying the, the attacks on Trump and Republicans. The biggest that Trump took classified documents. Very clearly, he said, even tweeted that he was declassifying all the Russia hoax documents, Crossfire Hurricane. At this point, we've seen the FBI lie, get FISA warrants to spy. They've leaked information and then cited the articles as more information for warrants. Documents were forged by attorneys at the DOJ. They went against protocols. They improperly targeted General Flynn. And they were covering up everything, interfered with elections, went to Facebook and stuff with information that would affect elections, saying it was disinformation. Former Intel officials signing a document saying that was misinformation. And now de just denying that Trump had the authority to declassify documents. Or that he did, in fact, declassify documents. Or that he had some elaborate process as president. The chief executive... The chief executive of the United States was supposed to have all these hoops he was supposed to jump through with the government to say, I want to declassify this. He was supposed to answer to them. But things have most definitely changed. Republicans balk on new gun restrictions after another series of mass shootings. Then the GOP-dominated Supreme Court effectively overturned the landmark Roe v. Wade decision that codified abortion as a constitutionally protected right. Is that what the Supreme Court did? The justices overturned a constitutionally protected right? It's, it's gone back to the states now. Lefties would have you think that the Constitution, their constitutional right, was overturned by SCOTUS. I wasn't aware SCOTUS had the power to amend the Constitution, but... No, the left wants to call it a living document. They want to interpret it, abortion rights, under the Fourth Amendment. You know, the right of people to be secure in their persons and their houses against unreasonable searches and seizures, somehow that that's supposed to equate. You have a right to privacy. This isn't about the government intruding on what other people are doing. You can't extend this and say, I can do what I want with my body, and, and say it doesn't involve another body. If it does involve a second person, what of their rights? What about life? The right to privacy has been used to birth and then starve a baby because... We're protecting the rights of the patients and staff to do that. The big question seems to be, when does life begin? You know, most liking the idea of brain activity and heartbeats, dreaming. There is a time when it's a clump of cells, but are cells alive? The predicate of your positions that life begins at fertilization, that science is very clear about that. And you have to know science isn't... There's no consensus among the scientific community. So he's talking about consensus. This, that's not how science is done. Consensus is the same thing that they use for climate change, where they say, well, most people believe, and if we can't find a link and prove the link, and there's not even correlation between factors, then how can you just fall back on consensus where we just have to go with what most scientists think? And the scientists on climate change a lot of times believe it are you know, what, what does it take to be a climate scientist? What falls into that category? A meteorologist, somebody that studied weather? A geologist, somebody that studied geology? Does it have to be a study of all history? All weather events? Because there are a lot of people that are involved with certain specific things to do with the climate that they study, and yet they have an opinion on everything outside of their wheelhouse. They go to college and they learn about marine life and they do a study on marine life, and then somehow they know all the history of weather and et cetera, et cetera. Science is being corrupted with this idea of consensus. And anytime anyone mentions that, you just know immediately that they don't have respect for the scientific method. There is, the, Dr. Phil. 96% no, of scientists not. say I, that I, life begins at fertilization. If no, you're an in vitro specialist, no, no, you're let, looking to create let, let me, let me a single cell embryo, and then you know you have a new human life. So it, it is a scientific fact. Well, actually, it's not. Well, when, do you, when do you say human life begins then? There's, well, it's, it doesn't matter what I think. I, I, I don't care what I think. What I'm saying is well, the scientific is community does not have a consensus 
about when life begins. It's simply and that inaccurate. Is, You're sim it's simply inaccurate. That's not true. You can go to the body. A single of, cell embryo is a unique new human life. You can go to the body of scientific literature and you can find neuroscientists who say that it begins when there is a detectable brain wave. But Dr. Phil, in to... an abortion, if it's not a human life, why do you have to kill it? They don't all agree. So we just don't know because you can't use your brain and say, when does life begin? So talking about life again, individualized DNA consensus. This isn't how science is done. And ultimately, a lot of times, absolute proof is difficult to find, and statistics can be used to lie. But if we're talking about consensus, how many think an abortion is ending a life of something? What about a life that can live outside the womb on its own? I know we can take the overall idea of it, can't get food, can't get water, or letting it, you know, can't take care of its own life and let it starve and say, well, it's not able to take care of itself and live on its own. But are you only life when you can walk to the fridge and open the door and get yourself a glass of water to drink? Maybe when, you can, when you're old enough to hunt and find drinkable water. Is that when life begins? What do most people think? I don't know. I know that most people don't want late-term abortions, that they know that that's not a good thing. And here, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a specialist. I might get a strike here on YouTube for even talking about these topics. But as a Republican, as a conservative, I feel that these issues are important. Democrats are taking this time to whitewash everything and say, well, that's not what the definition really means. Or there's no consensus on what scientists know. Well, if there's no consensus on what scientists know and we don't know, then how about we fall back on the idea of what people think and what people want, what the stats say polls say people want. People do not want abor abortions all the way up through, in some cases, after. The issue goes back to the states. Some states choose to go full on. You can have an abortion all you want. Other states choose to ban it almost entirely. That's a problem for the Democrats. They don't like it. It's a constitutional right somewhere. And SCOTUS, in its evil ways, decided to say that it wasn't something guaranteed by the Constitution, wasn't protected under the Fourth Amendment, and it goes back to the states, and now there's talk of ramping up the number of judges so that, or justices, excuse me, so that we can change the court. The idea would be that we just keep adding SCOTUSes every, SCOTUS justices every single time a new president is elected. From one party to the other, you could just keep packing it, the numbers could go up. Where does it stop? How many justices do we need? Thousand? Tens of thousands? No, the, the stupidity comes with not understanding how our system is set up and how it works, not backing a candidate that clearly is the best to handle the deep state, the swamp, whatever you want to call it. And I think it's a mistake to let yourself think that, you know, I've got nothing against the DeSantis or somebody else like that also running for president, but does he have to do it this next time around? Is he looking for these kind of things? Does he have a focus on making government smaller, getting rid of the rid of the bureaucracy that surrounds us, that chokes us, that taxes us, creates programs that don't work and never gets rid of them, never is able to change and go back to the way it was before where they made things worse in a lot of cases? Take it upon yourself to educate people. There's supposedly 20% of the populace is, is swayable. The people that are in the middle a lot of times, the independents, these are the people you should talk to and you shouldn't waver in your values because this kind of thing is important. It should be important to you. This is the viewpoint that surrounds a lot of politics and a lot of things that affect you on a day-to-day -day basis that you can't just blow off. You can't ignore. You can't say, well, my vote doesn't count because that's BS. Thanks for watching.